Hi, I'm Jim Gardner. Tom Gennard and I have put together a guide on solid fuel burners that we hope will assist you. We go from field to form to finish to give you the best practices of how to complete this form, which is very detailed and is critical to the underwriter's understanding of any risk where a solid fuel burner is present. Let's get started. Solid fuel burner inspections are all about clearances. And solid fuel burner clearances all boil down to whether it's UL listed or not UL listed. Your main objective when you're on site will be to take your tape measure and your camera and record the actual clearances to the nearest walls. When you use your tape measure and take a picture of it, the distances cannot be disputed. If you just were to take a photo, a lot of times it's hard to tell what the real distance is. If you have that photo with a tape, no one can object to it from the underwriters to the reviewers or the agents. This stove is a cast stove. It is airtight and we found out from the insured that it was installed by a contractor. For our manufacturer's cleared specifications, I asked the insured to provide the manufacturer's installation manual. They had the manual, so I'm going to be able to get all the appropriate clearances from the manual. If the insured does not have your manual available, you have to look on the back of the stove typically to find a panel that will give you the clearances. In this case, there is a metal heat shield about two inches away from the stove, so that will not let me see this uh, information on the back of the stove. So really the only way to get this information would be the manufacturer's brochure. There are three ways to verify if a stove is UL listed. You can use the manufacturer's manual, you can look for the label on the back of the stove, or you can go to their website and get the information from the website. What you're trying to do here is get a measurement and photograph it to the nearest wall or combustible surface. So I'm going to the nearest spot and I'm going to take a picture of it. So I can show the reviewers what we have here. Then I will move to the back wall and do the same thing. I've placed my rule on the stove and extended it out to touch the wall and it will sit right there while I take a picture. The next measurement would be to the next nearest wall, and there is no other wall within six feet here. Our next measurement is the height of the leg from the solid fuel burner. So I'll turn my tape on end and take a picture right there showing I have a six and a half foot inch leg. In this installation, we are sitting on solid concrete. Since this is on a concrete floor, we do not have to measure out to the sides into the front and give them floor protection because the floor is a non-combustible floor. However, we do have to take a look at the nearest combustible surface, and that would be to this back wall, and I'll measure it right there, pull my tape out, and just get a picture of it. Our next measurement would be the stove pipe to the wall. However, for this installation, the pipe exits directly through the back wall and into a triple wall insulated thimble. Our measurement then would be from the stove pipe to the nearest combustible surface. And so I would put my tape on the stove pipe, take a picture of my tape, and then I would have the distance to my nearest combustible surface. 
The connection to the chimney goes straight from the back of the stove into a triple wall insulated thimble. You will find three different instances of installation. This is a one wall installation. If it were in a corner, so we had a wall coming out here, it would be a two wall. If you were in a situation where you had a wall on each side of this and a wall on the back, that would be a three wall or a niche installation. When you are looking at protection on your back wall, you should be looking at what the installation is. In this case, we have tile that is directly, directly on the wall. There are no air spaces on the side. If there were, you would put your finger right into that air space and take a picture of it to show that there's an air space. If this wall needed an air space, it would have to be on the side and also at the bottom. So I would take a picture on each of the places and also at the top. The air spaces accomplish air movement behind the back wall. That would keep the heat from building up and moving from one area of the wall through this into the back wall. Without an airspace, if there were a combustible material behind this tile, over time it could dry that material out and you could end up getting com spontaneous combustion and a fire. Since we can't see the exterior installation of the vent pipe on our way out, we will take a look and see what it is from the outside. Well, the field work is complete, and it's time to input the data we gathered into the form. Let's get started. 